Elden what? Never heard of it, mate. Let's talk instead about FromSoft's 2015 masterpiece, Bloodborne. Or, more specifically, it's Stella the Old Hunters DLC. There are strange things afoot in Yarnum. Did somebody say afoot? Not now, Miyazaki, shoo. And it's up to you, Detective Hunter, to piece together this particular puzzle. The Old Hunters is, at least in my opinion, the best DLC FromSoft have released to date, and arguably one of the finest DLCs for any game. But what the hell is it all about, anyway? So there you are, soaked in the blood of beasts and kin alike, and ready to face the final bosses of Bloodborne. But there's this nagging voice in your head saying, Not yet, you masochist. You're not done with this pain for now. So I guess it's DLC time. You return to the hunter's dream to find the eye of a blood drunk hunter sitting on the steps. Gross. Who left it there? Probably the doll. Maybe it's like when your cat leaves a half dead mouse on your doorstep or something. Anyway, the only obvious and logical thing to do with this eye is to take it to the cathedral ward and let yourself get grabbed by the giant daddy long legs. You know, the one that insta kills you otherwise because that's logical and obvious. Only this time, instead of the sweet relief of death, you get a cutscene that heralds the beginning of something far worse. Upon exiting the cutscene, you find yourself in what appears to be an alternate plane of reality, a twisted nightmarish version of Yarnum's Cathedral Ward that looks like a giant vomited all over it. This is the Hunter's Nightmare, a realm where hunters drunk on blood are cursed to live out their existence. That's the lore, anyway. The practical implication of this is that the hunter enemies you'd normally find as mini-bosses in the main game are now just normal enemies, with new varieties including Mr. Whippy, Boomstick Bob, School Shooter Steve, and Long Nails Larry. So, that's fun. Hope you put on your parry shoes today. After making your way up to the top of the Cathedral Weird and avoiding getting turned into sausage meat by Cockblock Cthulhu, you enter the Nightmare Cathedral where you obtain a strange pendant from the altar. Because if there's one thing that FromSoft love, it's a good pendant. There's also a suspiciously boss-like beast corpse in here, but don't worry, we'll come back for that later. To the side of the Cathedral, you take a quick sightseeing tour of all the local beauty spots like um, Gunfuck Bridge, Bloodbug River, and of course, who could forget the stunning natural rock formations of Painful Death Cave, complete with its own blood-starved beast, as well as this absolute sweaty Call of Duty reject camping with an LMG. Make sure you message him right after beating him to tell him how he sucks and how you did stuff with his mum. It's only right. Beyond all the pretty flowers and unicorns, you meet Simon, a mysterious hunter who gets extra style points for wearing a ball sack on his back, and he hints at a deeper mystery hidden in the nightmare for you to discover. Blah blah blah, whatever. Can we just kill some more stuff now? You unlock the shortcut near Simon, run past a couple more squid-faced monsters while trying not to get blasted into the Shadow Realm, and it's finally time to face off against the DLC's first boss, the terrifying Ludwig the Accursed the first hunter of the Healing Church, who is now trapped in the Nightmare Forever. Yep, that's right, it's the same Ludwig as the Noob Sword. Now, I don't know what you were expecting, but if you imagine God got drunk and made an angry horse with ADHD out of spare parts, you're probably about halfway there. Ludwig is a real test of skill with his skittish attacks, instant charges and screaming leaps. Get through that, and you're rewarded with a fan service cutscene at the halfway point in which Ludwig pulls the Holy Moonlight Sword out of his ass because where the hell else would he have been keeping it? And the fight switches to you versus Big Sword, complete with the most epic soundtrack of the game. Stagger and repost him like the boss you are, and you're done here. After the fight, you can play church dress up and convince his severed head to gift you the Moonlight Sword before killing it anyway because, you know, fuck that guy. And then you make your way past two absolute dickhead hunters to an altar 
where you insert the mysterious pendant from earlier into a corpse's skull, which activates a lift. I'm sorry, what? Don't forget to also grab Lawrence the First Vicar's skull from its hiding place under the altar too, because you wouldn't want to miss out on the fun to come later. At the top of the lift, you reach my personal favourite area in any FromSoft game, the Research Hall. First, the lore. This is where Lady Maria, a hunter under German's mentorship, experimented on people to try and unlock the secrets of ascension to the realms of the Great Ones. Now, the reality. This is spoopy Hogwarts, complete with testicle-headed patients who either beg you to kill them or try to beat you to death with their IVs. It's like there's no middle ground. Make your way up to the top and rotate the stairs and you can unlock the route to the next boss. First though, there's the small matter of a side quest where you have to feed brain fluid to a bollock-headed beauty called Adeline until she loses her body completely and then you feed her her own brain fluid which grants you the power to become a cauliflower. Look, just don't ask, okay? Now that's out of the way, it's boss time again and you should be able to relate to this one because they're called the Living Failures. Well, what can I say about this fight? Um, it's a pretty arena, and their meteor attack's kind of cool. That's about it, really. Moving on swiftly. Yo, dog. I heard you like boss fights, so we put a boss fight straight after your boss fight. What a fight it is, though. Upon entering the astral clock tower beyond the failures, you find the corpse of Lady Maria slumped in a chair. It seems that she did the big sad and killed herself because she couldn't handle the reality of what she'd done. A bit late once you've literally set up an entire research facility, but, you know, whatever. What really matters is that she comes to life if you poke her and gives you the sexy talk before proceeding to open up a whole superstore of whoop-ass on you. Parry her first phase like it's going out of fashion. This is too easy. Then she pulls out her splishy splooshy sword and that one fucking hurts. Marry me, please, Lady Maria, you beautiful, angry goddess of death. No, I said marry me, not make your swords extra spicy. Survive the encounter, and you can unlock the clock tower's dial to find the last secret left to be revealed. The fishing hamlet. Law time again, so grab a hot cup of Estus and settle in. Once upon a time, the corpse of Koz, a pregnant great one, washed upon the shores of the fishing hamlet, releasing parasites that turned the villagers into fish monsters. The healing church said, Oi oi, what's all this about then? And descended on the village to slaughter its inhabitants and harvest their eyes. In turn, the spirit of Koz cursed the hunters to be stuck in the nightmare forever for their sins. Probably serves them right to be honest. Now that Varty time is over, the fun can begin. Did I say fun? I meant things that will make you say I have had it with these motherfucking mutated sharks on this motherfucking plane of existence. Grab yourself your very own testicle suit, find a dying Simon, avoid the flying fish ladies, and pop down the well to grab yourself Lady Maria's old weapon, the Rakuyo. Actually, on second thoughts, fuck that. It's almost time to end this nightmare, but first, there's one small bit of business to attend to. So you return to the start of the nightmare and bring Lawrence's skull back to the cathedral for an optional boss fight. From the people who brought you Chili Cheese Stray Demon and Cool Ranch Smelter Demon comes their next flavor sensation, Flaming Hot Cleric Beast. This should be easy, right? It's just a reskin of the first boss of the game. Nope. Lawrence is a massive fiery arsehole who ignites half the arena with his AOEs and spits more hot shit than my last mixtape. So step carefully and cut him down to size, get it? Before hacking away the remains of his miserable existence. Easy. Ready for the final leg of your journey, you return to the hamlet and make your way down onto the beach, where you find the corpse of Mother Coz giving birth to the orphan of Coz which is pleasant. Some lore experts have suggested that the orphan might be a twisted version of a hunter formed by Koz in the nightmare as revenge. What you actually get 
is a giant skinny old man baby intent on beating you to death with an extendable placenta. I'm not even joking here. You're all like, you okay there mate? And he's all like, yeah! And you're all like, fine then, I'll just hit you instead. And he's all like, yeah! And grows wings and you're all like, dead. Rinse and repeat about another 50 times or so, and you'll eventually best this annoying piece of shit. Finally, the nightmare is slain, the skies have cleared, and the DLC is done. On the plus side, you've just completed one of the finest pieces of content FromSoft ever made. On the downside, nothing else will feel as satisfying, and the rest of your life will become an empty hollow sham. So, well done I guess? As always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not yet, and I'll catch you all next time for some more. Peace.